Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 58 of the video podcast, Me and My Dong and Some Yarn. Today is September 11th, 2015. It is Friday. And it is actually the 14th anniversary of uh, the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. Um, yeah, sad day. I've been thinking about it all day, as I know most of you have probably also, um, especially if you're here in the United States. And um, extremely sad and emotional, even 14 years later. And... Um, I guess it's just something that we shouldn't forget. So, um, anyways, how have you guys been? I hope you've been doing okay. We've been all right, just extremely busy. I have been sewing up a storm. I've got a collaboration with someone, and so I've been sewing up bags for that. Bless you. And then um, I'm redoing my whole Etsy store. Um, I've changed the name. I've just, I'm in the process of giving it a whole new makeover. Um, I've got a brand new bag design, which is the main bag I think I'm going to go with um, from now on. So in the future, I will probably have all of my old bags that I still have on hand. I'll probably put those on sale. And when that happens, I will let you guys know either through here at a podcast or on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you need to do so. My name over there is Black Horse Knitter. Um, Ravelry is Black Horse. And Instagram and actually Periscope now is Black Horse Knitter. So uh, follow me there to get updates and... Um, yeah, that's, that's where you can find out. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, anyways, let's see. Oh, I have to tell you about Dottie. She gave me a scare. <laughs> She's hilarious. She gave me such a scare Friday, or uh, Wednesday night. It was Wednesday night. My husband had come home from work and asked me if I wanted to go out to eat. And of course, I said yes, because I was extremely tired and didn't want to cook or do dishes, so we went to dinner, but before we went to dinner, I asked my husband to let Dottie out to go to the bathroom, that I needed to run to the to the bathroom and, and change my clothes real quick, so um, he let her out, and I got ready, and we left, and then when we got back about an hour and a half later, I rushed to the bathroom to take my shower and put on my pajamas because I was so tired. And I thought, I'm just going to sit on the couch tonight and knit for, you know, 30, 40 minutes before I have to think about going to bed. So that's what I did. And Dottie was just itching and licking her belly. And I thought, what is wrong with that dog? So I called her over and she came over. And when I saw her, she had a huge nose. And like something had bit her. And I think we had our grass cut that day. And I think it probably stirred up bugs in the grass. And I think it might have been a wasp or a bee that stung her. But she was all swollen across the top of her nose right here on the top. And then she was swollen on the bottom over here. And um, scared me to death. Oh my gosh. I hopped up, I ran to the bathroom and looked in the medicine cabinet to make sure we had Benadryl, and we did. And then I frantically called my sister who worked at a vet clinic, uh, and I asked her, how many Benadryls can I give her? And um, she told me, and so we got some Benadryl in her, and in about 30, 40 minutes, it started going down a little bit. Knocked her out. She she wanted to go to bed right away after probably after about 15, 20 minutes of giving her the Benadryl, she was headed to the hallway where she sleeps at night. So I thought that was kind of funny. So I got up in the middle of the night to check on her and it had gone down a little bit. But then when I got up at 4.30 in the morning uh, to get ready for work, it was starting to swell again. So I gave her two more Benadryls. And when I got home yesterday afternoon, it was much better. And 
it was still a little swollen, but I don't like to give her medicine unless she actually needs it. So I just let it go down on its own from that point on. And she's fine. She's been eating and drinking. and But her belly was extremely red when she got bit. And I don't know if that has something to do with the poison that was in her from being bit. Um, if she was having an allergic reaction. But the Benadryl took care of that. So she's much better. So I'm extremely glad. <laughs> I can't stand to see her in pain um you know it's like a kid when you see your kids in pain you wish you could take it from them but you can't and you know it's extremely sad so anyway she's doing good now um so i guess let's get on with the show um announcements i we have some new members and i'll go over those real quick uh we have nitpicky and pa so that's carol in pennsylvania so welcome to the show. And then we have Tamora, who is Kayleen, I think is how you say her name, K-A-Y-L-E-N-E, -E, and she is from Australia, so welcome. And then we have Yarn Junior, I think, uh, Y-A-R-N-J-R, and I don't know this user's name or where she's at, or he, I'm not sure. Um, but welcome to the show. Thanks for watching. And then we have a uh, Franciscan Gypsy who is Talia from Virginia. She has uh, the podcast with her mom, uh, Marlisha. They do the Pin, Hook, and Needles uh, podcast. So if you're not watching that, go check that out. So welcome, Talia. And then we have uh, Anne Fran 25 who is Anne from North Carolina. So welcome to you also. Um, thanks for joining us, and I hope you guys will participate in the Ravelry group that we have. Um, that's where we do all the knit-alongs and asking questions and just sharing different things, so come and join us. Um, sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it's more active, and I've been really bad about not being active in there, and I apologize. I have just been extremely busy. Um, but hopefully things will change in the next week or so as we get into the fall season and things get back to normal. What? Oh my. Um, anyway, so welcome guys. Uh, we do have a knit along coming up and I am so super excited about this. Um, the me and my dog and some yarn video podcast group will be participating in the toy along this year. And the toy along is hosted by Talia and Marlisha of the Pin, Hook, and Needles podcast. And there is also maybe one or two other podcasters um, who will be participating with them. Um, but it is, uh, I think it's set for October 1st through December 31st, and you make a toy. And, of course, there will be prizes involved, and if you participate, you can double dip into my group, into the Pin, Hook, and Needles podcast group, and then um, the other group or groups that are participating. So um, watch for more details on that. Um, that's always exciting. Um, I like making toys. I don't make them very often, but every time I make a toy, I think of my grandma, my mama, because she knitted toys all the time. And in fact, I have some toys here in my knitting room displayed on my wall, which um, I guess I'll show you guys later so I don't have to move the camera. But I have a little pig puppet that's knitted. Um, it, I played with it so much it's missing an eye. And I have a little duck, and I have um, a clown. I keep looking over at them. They are so cute. They bring back such good memories. She, um, my mama used to make uh, knitted toys for all of her grandchildren, and we we absolutely love them. So that's exciting. I can't wait to do that pot, that knit along or crochet along. It doesn't have to be knitting. It can be crochet also. And actually, um, Talia, who is French, uh, Franciscan Gypsy, 
she has uh, designed a bunch of crochet toys and if you're thinking about crocheting a toy and being a part of the knit along please go check out her patterns um, she's got some really cute ones I think my favorite one is the cat um, I like cats so um, let's see I'm at 10 minutes um, okay I guess let's get started I have um, one finished object and let me see what I did with it. Oh, here. It is my August socks and they are Desert Vista Dye Works and it, it was for the, the official unofficial Desert Vista Dye Works knit along and these are um, Zombodies Walking on the Sun. And they are perfectly matched stripy socks. And I absolutely love them. Um, they remind me of fall because of the colors, the orange and the yellow. And I cannot wait to wear them. So, so cute. So that, oh, and they're just vanilla socks. I didn't tell you that. Um, I cast on 24 stitches, 12 stitches on each needle using the magic loop and Judy's Magic Cast On. Then I knit um, six and a quarter inches and then I put in my waist yarn for the afterthought heel and I go ahead and knit um, until, I don't think I measured it, I knit until I think that's long enough and then I did just an inch of ribbing on this one. I really probably like more like two inches of ribbing but I don't know. I just, I was ready to be done with these because I started them. I didn't start them like the 1st of August. And of course I had to finish them by August 31st. So I kind of rushed them because I started them probably like around the 10th or 11th of August. And I was worried about finishing them. So that's why they have a short rib. But I love them and they will get some use this fall. Um, what else is in my basket? I found a basket that I had purchased at um, TJ Maxx, uh, which is like Home Goods, and I purchased it for $12 a while back. And for some reason, I had it just up in the closet without anything in it. So I thought that would be perfect to put all of my podcast stuff in because throughout the week or weeks, uh, before I podcast, I throw in all kinds of stuff all over the place. I usually sit it over here on my sewing bench, but sometimes it's on my desk, and it just, it's a mess. So from now on, when I finish an object and I want to show you guys, it's going to go in the basket. And then, of course, I'll put any, um, any acquisitions in here or, um, projects that I'm working on and I can get it all gathered for you guys before I podcast. Um, I actually see something I wanted to show you sitting on my desk. It did not go in the basket. So I will show you next time on that. Um, anyways, let's get going. I did want to show you something I've been working on. Um, my cousin uh, has two twins. Um, him and his wife have two twins. They don't live very far from me. They live um, maybe 10, 15 minutes away. And she asked me, I had knitted, if you go and look on Ravelry, I had knitted sundresses for them. The top portion, they were 4th of July, and I knitted the top portion out of um, peaches and cream cotton. And then I went and bought really cute 4th of July fabric and made the skirt part of the uh, sundress. And she loved them. I think they wore them at least two years, maybe three. And they wore them for Memorial Day and Fourth of July. And um, they got a lot of use out, out of them. Well, she asked me if I would mind. Sorry about that. Um, I thought that was turned off. Um, she asked if I would sew them dresses because um, Amberly, one of the twins, was in intensive care and had some heart issues when she was born. 
And so um, every year they go to um, like a reunion type thing with her. And she likes to dress the girls up for that. And it's in, it's during the fall. I think it's in October. And so she called me and asked me if I would mind sewing dresses that didn't really match but blended. So I told her, of course, you know, so we went shopping. We had a great time. We went shopping and she picked out the fabric and she picked out the pattern. I said, just pick out whatever, you know, it doesn't matter and I'll sew it up. So I've been working on that. Um, I can't, I came into an issue, but anyways, look how cute this is. Is that not adorable? I think they're three years old or maybe they're four. I can't remember my bad cousin um but anyways is that not the cutest thing how cute are they gonna be oh my goodness i will have to post some pictures i'll ask her and make sure it's okay that i post the pictures first of course but oh my goodness they are gonna be adorable so um we bought two different kinds of fabric and i think what we're gonna do is we're going like this will be one but then the ruffle will be the accent of the other one so they'll be flip-flopped it's gonna be cute i cannot wait to see those girls in those dresses and then um pam is gonna go and look for hats that match the dresses and i would show you the fabric but it's over on my sewing machine so maybe i'll show you that next time but anyways that was cute i just had to show you and share okay so i have three projects that i'm working on uh, the first one is in my Erin Lane bag, and I got this at, um, I think I got this at DFW Fiberfest. Yeah, that's where I got it. Um, I am working on a pair of socks for my husband for Christmas. I don't know how far I have gotten since you guys might have seen this. I don't know. Um, this is... Knitting Rose Yarns, and at um, the Kid and You, the last Kid and You that we had here in Texas, it's in Borney, Texas, and the colorway is Pecan Brown, and it's on the Budding 400 Sock um, Yarn Base, and it's a, it's a Bison Down, 10% of that, with 90% superwash merino and it's like a pecan brown um, that's probably more true to color right there it's a dark chocolatey brown and I'm just knitting I've ripped these out twice I am just knitting a basic toe up sock with a slip stitch I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to uh, see because it's brown, but there you go. There's the slip stitch. Um, I didn't want a real textured sock for him because I've knitted him a few pairs of really textured socks. I wanted something simple, and I started it as just stockinette, and it was too plain. So I went back in there and added the slip stitch. So um, that's as far as I've gotten knitting these on my knit picks. I think they're a US 2, which is fine because I just knit the basic sock that I knit, but I normally knit mine on a 1 or a 1.5, and this is a 2, so they'll be bigger, bigger around. Um, so that is that. Then I am knitting on, um, oh, what's the next one? Rioja, I think it's R I O J A, and it is um, it is a pattern by Hillary Smith Callis, I think. And let me show you the picture of the pattern. The oh, wrong one. This is my second one. Um, you guys remember that I knitted. Um, the real cute pink one. Um, here is the pattern. And, and 
this one, um, I don't know who I'm going to give this for, to. It's just a, a gift. It's going to go in the gift box. Um, but I'm getting it out of Fiber Obsessions. And that is um, the Silver Luxe Sock in the Foggy Bottom colorway. And I purchased this on the first yarn crawl that I went on. Um, the Hill Country Yarn Crawl. That was the first one. I've been on two, and the third one's coming up. So I'm super excited about that. But here it is so far, and it's almost done. It's really, really pretty. I'm loving how it's turning out. Um, it is a sock yarn. It's a little bit thicker than I'm used to, and I think that's because I've been working with the Desert Vista Dye Works yarn, and that seems to be a little bit thinner, that base. Um, but it's really pretty, and whoever I get this to is going to absolutely love it. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it. It's a really, really pretty. I cannot wait to finish it. I'm hoping I have enough yarn um, because the ball is getting really tiny. And I have probably, well, it has a peacoat bind off for one. And I have, oh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve more rows to go. What do you think, guys? Do you think I can? get 12 more rows plus peacoat binding and still have enough yarn I don't know we'll see um, if it gets really close I might just try to end it early I always hate that when I get I like to use all of my yarn but I hate playing yarn chicken because it totally freaks me out so, anyways, and then the last, um, the last project I'm working on is a new sock that I cast on last night, which is the 10th of the month already. It's my Desert Vista Dye Work socks. I had cast it on earlier, but I was not liking the sock I was knitting. I was knitting um, just a plain vanilla sock, and it just wasn't doing it for this yarn. This is a... Um, and my ball looks funny. <laughs> I was winding the ball on my ball winder. And I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And I was going real fast because I was in a hurry. And before I knew it, the ball just flew off and rolled down the hallway. And I was halfway done. So then I had to wind it myself the rest of the way. Because I couldn't get the skein back onto the ball winder. And then... Um, in the middle of ripping this out and starting the new sock, the top half came away from the bottom half and I had two skeins that I couldn't put back together. So I took that bottom skein that wasn't attached to my knitting and wound it by hand from the second skein. It was a mess. Anyways, the yarn is beautiful nonetheless. It is a uh, 19, yeah, 1949's M&M's, and they are the color of the M&M's. Of course, the blue is missing because I don't think they added blue until later, um, but I love this yarn, and um, as I said, the stockinette, it's a variegated yarn, and the stockinette just wasn't doing anything for the yarn, so I was on Instagram playing around, and Miss Shu from the Snit, uh, In a Snit podcast, um, I follow her on Instagram, and she posted that she had two new patterns out for socks, and they were for, uh, specifically designed for um, variegated yarn. So, uh, if you go and buy her two patterns, and I think it's still going on right now, because this was yesterday. Um, you can get both of her patterns for five dollars, where they're normally three fifty. And I'm knitting Whizbang, and it's by Sarah Shu of the In a Snit podcast. And this is what I have so far. That is doing so much better than the plain stockinette. You can see what the stockinette looked like 
on the bottom of my foot or toe. So much better, don't you guys think? I am loving this and it has a different sock construction. It actually has a right and a left foot sock. And this is the right sock. And I am loving it. I, I've already slipped it on my foot to see how it fits and I really like the fit of the toe. So um, anyways, go check out this pattern. And once again, that's Whiz Bang by Sarah Shu. Okay, so that is it. And of course, um, I had some beautiful yarn to show you that I got from a friend of mine who lives in Amsterdam. And then I have the yarn from um, Vincent. It's actually Vincent's mom, um, my husband's ex-wife. Uh, my stepson's mother, <laughs> Cynthia, and she sent me some gorgeous yarn. She actually found it at her market, and we don't have yarn at my market. So I thought that was really cool and very sweet of her. And I will show you that next week, um, along with the skein of yarn that Vincent bought in Amsterdam at a yarn store for me, and he accidentally left there when he left. So... She emailed that as well. And then um, I forgot to bring over a magazine to show you guys. So I will do that next time. And I will also show you a sample of my new bag next time because I didn't bring that over here either. Um, I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else to tell you. But I'm sure as soon as I hit end... I will think of something because that's usually how it goes. But I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I hope you enjoy doing something you love. And um, I will talk to you guys next week. Y'all have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 58 of the video podcast, Me and My Dong and Some Yarn. Today is September 11th, 2015. It is Friday. And it is actually the 14th anniversary of uh, the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. Um, yeah, sad day. I've been thinking about it all day, as I know most of you have probably also. Um, especially if you're here in the United States. And... Um, Extremely sad and emotional, even 14 years later, and um, I guess it's just something that we shouldn't forget. So, um, anyways, how have you guys been? I hope you've been doing okay. We've been alright, just extremely busy. I have been sewing up a storm. I've got a collaboration with someone and so I've been sewing up bags for that bless you and then um, I'm redoing my whole Etsy store um, I've changed the name I've just I'm in the process of giving it a whole new makeover um, I've got a brand new bag design which is the main bag I think I'm gonna go with um, from now on so in the future, I will probably have all of my old bags that I still have on hand. I'll probably put those on sale. And when that happens, I will let you guys know either through here at a podcast or on Instagram. And it's in action, but the Benadryl took care of that. So she's much better. So I'm extremely glad. <laughs> I can't stand to see her in pain. Um, you know, it's like a kid. When you see your kids in pain, you wish you could take it from them, but you can't. And, you know, it's extremely sad. So, anyway, she's doing good now. Um, so, I guess let's get on with the show. Um, announcements. I We have some new members, and I'll go over those real quick. Uh, we have Knit Picky in PA, so that's Carol in Pennsylvania. So, welcome to the show. And then we have... Tamora 
who is Kayleen, I think is how you say her name, K-A-Y-L-E-N-E, -E, and she is from Australia, so welcome. And then we have Yarn Junior, I think, uh, Y-A-R-N-J-R, and I don't know this user's name or where she's at, or he, I'm not sure, um, but welcome to the show, thanks for watching. And then we have a uh, Franciscan Gypsy, who is Talia from Virginia. She has uh, the podcast with her mom, uh, Marlisha. They do the Pin, Hook, and Needles uh, podcast. So if you're not watching that, go check that out. So welcome, Talia. And then we have uh, Anne Fran 25 who is Anne from North Carolina. So welcome to you also. Um, thanks for joining us. And I hope you guys will participate in the Ravelry group that we have. Um, that's where we do all the knit-alongs and asking questions and just sharing different things. So come and join us. Um, sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's more active. And I've been really bad about not being active in there. And I apologize. I have just been extremely busy. Um, but hopefully things will change in the next week or so as we get into the fall season and things get back to normal. What? Oh my. Um, anyway, so welcome guys. Uh, we do have a knit along coming up and I am so super excited about this. Um, the me and my dog and some yarn video podcast group will be participating in the toy along this year. And the toy along is hosted by Talia and Marlisha of the Pin, Hook, and Needles podcast. And there is also maybe one or two other podcasters um, who will be participating with them. Um, but it is, uh, I think it's set for October 1st through December 31st, and you make a toy. And, of course, there will be prizes involved, and if you participate... You can double dip into my group, into the Pin, Hook, and Needles podcast group, and then um, the other group or groups that are participating. So um, watch for more details on that. Um, that's always exciting. Um, I like making toys. I don't make them very often, but every time I make a toy, I think of my grandma. My mama she had her grass cut that day. And I think it probably stirred up bugs in the grass. And I think it might have been a wasp or a bee that stung her. But she was all swollen across the top of her nose right here on the top. And then she was swollen on the bottom over here. And um, scared me to death. Oh, my gosh. I hopped up. I ran to the bathroom and looked in the medicine cabinet to make sure we had Benadryl. And we did. And then I frantically called my sister who worked at a vet clinic, uh, and I asked her, how many Benadryls can I give her? And um, she told me, and so we got some Benadryl in her, and in about 30, 40 minutes, it started going down a little bit. Knocked her out. She, she wanted to go to bed right away. After Probably after about 15, 20 minutes of giving her the Benadryl, she was headed to the hallway where she sleeps at night so I thought that was kind of funny so I got up in the middle of the night to check on her and it had gone down a little bit but then when I got up at 4 30 in the morning uh, to get ready for work it was starting to swell again so I gave her two more Benadryls and when I got home yesterday afternoon it was much better and it was still a little swollen but I don't like to give her medicine unless she actually needs it so I just let it go down on its own from that point on and she's fine she's been eating and drinking and but her belly was extremely red when she got bit I don't know if that has something to do with the poison that was in her from being bit um, if she was having an allergic reaction not following me on Instagram you need to do so my name over there is black horse knitter um, Ravelry is black horse and Instagram and actually Periscope now is Black Horse Knitter. So uh, follow me there to get updates. And um, yeah, that's.
that's that's where you can find out. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, anyways, let's see. Oh, I have to tell you about Dottie. She gave me a scare. <laughs> She's hilarious. She gave me such a scare Friday or uh, Wednesday night. It was Wednesday night. My husband had come home from work and asked me if I wanted to go out to eat. And of course, I said yes because I was extremely tired and didn't want to cook or do dishes. So we went to dinner. But before we went to dinner, I asked my husband to let Dottie out to go to the bathroom that I needed to run to the to the bathroom and and change my clothes real quick. So um he let her out and I got ready and we left. And then when we got back about an hour and a half later, I rushed to the bathroom to take my shower and put on my pajamas because I was so tired. And I thought, I'm just going to sit on the couch tonight and knit for, you know, 30, 40 minutes before I have to think about going to bed. So that's what I did. And Dottie was just itching and licking her belly. And I thought, what is wrong with that dog? So I called her over and she came over. And when I saw her, she had a huge nose and like something had bit her. And I think, 